Miss Lynn here, and I welcome you to take this challenge, the BIS Virtual Field Day Challenge, and share with us how it goes. In the comments below, I want you to let us know which activity you're doing and why you chose it. Check out my videos to see how you can add a layer of math to the virtual field day challenges. I have two water bottles. We don't buy one-time use plastic water bottles at my house, so I'm gonna do the best I can with my two Nalgene's. These are not the same size, nor do they have the same amount of water in it. So are these probabilities gonna be the same as those of you out there using Deer Park water bottles? What do you think? Okay, so here we go. So two bottles down means I have a 30 second plank, low or high or high knees. So as I'm doing the 30 second plank, what I want you to think about is could these two dice or number cubes or whatever you want to call them, could we replicate the probabilities of the water bottle challenge with these two number cubes? What size is the sample space of two six-sided dice? Two six-sided dice have six sides on one dice, six sides on the other. Does that make a total sample space of 12 or 36? Well, if I got one on the red dice, then I have six possible outcomes for the yellow. So that's six outcomes that include one on the red dice. Then for each number on the red dice, there's six outcomes. So for one, there's six, two, six. Number three on the red dice has six possible outcomes to the yellow dice. Four on the red dice has six possible outcomes all the one, two, three, four, five, six on the yellow dice. So two dice have a potential of a sample space that is 36 unique outcomes. Considering that one on the red and two on the yellow is different from one on the yellow, two on the red. So can we replicate these outcomes with dice? Well, first of all, you have to ask yourself, are these the same sort of probabilities? Rolling numbers with two number cubes, these are equally likely outcomes. All 36 possible outcomes of rolling two dice are equally likely. The three outcomes for the bottle flip fitness challenge, are they equally likely? I'm telling you, I flipped this water bottle almost 20 times, never once did it land up and it definitely never landed on its head. This water bottle I flipped seven times until I got it to land up. So my probabilities for these three fitness challenges are very different. It's way more, it's almost probable, it's very probable, it's almost certain, I mean, that I'm gonna end up having to do a 30 second plank or however long I've been trying to hold this plank. It is nearly impossible that I would ever land both of these up. So I almost will never do 10 sit-ups. And it's very unlikely that I'd ever get one up, one down. Oops, I did the 10 push-ups already. Now it's time for the 10 sit-ups. What about low boat, high boat? So while I'm doing low boat, high boat, excuse me, what if we took data on how many times we landed the bottles both up, both down, one up, one down, and then got an experimental probability because for these landing up and down, it's not equally likely not any sort of result that is easily put onto a multiplication table like these which are 
very much equally likely. So the best bet for these to find the probabilities and likelihoods is to run an experiment, collect data, and find ratios and percents. Percents are just a fancy ratio that relate numbers to 100% or one whole. So relating everything to one whole, it's a Snoopy, it's okay. Quiet, lay down Snoop. Snoop wants to do some sit-ups too, I guess. Um, the percentage is awesome because it relates everything that you can collect data on to one and then they're comparable. So if we figured out the percent of the times that we could get these different outcomes, it's not gonna be 33% not going to be 33 33 33 if it were then we could use these because then 12 of the outcomes could do 10 setups 12 of the outcomes could do 10 push-ups and 12 of the outcomes could do 30 second plank but rather we can boil it down to compare it to 1 or 10 or 100 add as many zeros as you want and then find a probability system that can replicate that on maybe a 1 to 10 scale 1 out of 10 scale or one out of 100, and that's where computer technology comes in to helpful play because you can have a number generator and there's nine digits. So nine digits lets us know that, I'm sorry, there's 10 digits, zero through nine, and it helps you create a simulator that could replicate what's actually gonna happen in real life when outcomes are not pretty and they're unknown and you want to get a sense of the theoretical probability by conducting an experiment. The more times you do something, the more accurate it will be. So of course, if I rolled, flip my water bottles once, that doesn't give me a really good understanding of the behavior of this action. If I do it 10 times, that's better. 100 times, yes. A thousand, ten thousand, the more you do it, the more your experimental probability will actually represent the theoretical probability. Thank you for tuning in to this math perspective on the BIS Virtual Field Day Fitness Challenge. While you all are doing your fitness challenges, I encourage you to get a notebook and collect data on the things that you are doing to keep yourself healthy, fit, and happy, and um, use those, those notes and try to relate them to numbers somehow, and then look at something that you're going to come back to regularly, something you enjoy, a practice that you're proud of, come back to it regularly and see if you can just add like a numbers math layer to it, however it fits your life best. I have my daughter's little tyke hoop and a various assortment of the little tykes balls and let's see how many I can make. My math perspective on this is what percent represents the number of shots I make out of the total number of shots I take. So what kind of data would you have to collect if you wanted to figure out your shot scored percentage. So you're gonna to wanna to keep track of how many shots you take and how many you make. What fraction can you use to represent the number of shots you make to the number of shots you take? Right, the numerator would be the number of shots you actually make and the denominator would be the number of shots you take total, whether you make them or miss them. How do you turn that into a percentage? You can do long division, divide the numerator, so you put the numerator inside the division house, and the denominator is the divisor, so you can divide it, and it's gonna be a number equal to one if you make all your shots, and a number less than one, so a number between zero and one if you don't make all your shots, and your number will be zero, because zero divided by anything is zero if you miss all your shots. And then, if you don't, want to do long division you could grab a calculator but you'll get a and you'll get a decimal so whether you do long division or you grab a calculator you're going to get a decimal how does that decimal turn into a percent and how are you going to turn that decimal into a percent you're going to move the decimal place two times to the right 
So whatever value was in the hundredths place when it was a decimal is now going to be where? Yes, it's going to be in the ones place. And then you'll put a percent symbol after it. All right, Snoopy, go inside. Good girl. All right, let's see. Zero. number to stop at if you need to multiply to get the percent so you would multiply 18 by 5 to get the percent because 20 times 5 is 100 so if my fraction my ratio is 18 out of 20 I would multiply both of them by 5 to get my ratio to be equivalent but look different with the denominator of 100 so what I would do is do 2 times 5 because 2 is how far 18 is from 20. 2 times 5 is 10. I'll take that away from 100 because 20 times 5 is 100. And that will give me 18 times 5. So 18 times 5 is 90. Or I could do the trick when I multiply by 5s. I know that I can take half the number and move the decimal place over. So 18, half of that is 9. Move the decimal place over. It's 90. Anyway. I had a 90% shot rate. Let's see how that changes when I shoot five more basketballs or five more balls. All right. One, two, three. No. Okay, so then out of 25 baskets, I missed four. So what's my percent now? What how many what percent of balls did I make in the little pig's basket? So 21 out of 25. What do you multiply 25 by to get to 100? Multiply by 4. So 25 times 4 is 100. 21 times 4. Well, 2 and 1 times 4 is easier than 18 times 5 because with 18 we have to carry over into other place values. 21 times 5, both 2 and 1 are are easier to work with. We're not carrying over from the ones place. So 21 one times five is five, two times five is 10. So what does that mean? What is 21 times five? What am I doing wrong? What was my mistake in my logic? Did you catch it? Right, we're not multiplying 21 by five like we did when we were dealing with the ratio 18 out of 20. Now we're dealing with the ratio 21 out of 25. So to write the proportion or the equivalent ratios, you take the denominator, denominator is 25, how many times does that go into 100? Four, 25 times four is 100. So I need to multiply 21 times four, not five. Like I said, two times four is eight. One times four is four, so I have 84% shot. So was my percent shooting better when I did 20 or 25? Right, my better score was during 20 shots. I switched to the larger basketball and then I did worse. That was my experimental probability. In theory, what could I do to calculate the theoretical probability of me making something? Could you think about the cross section of the ball? What area does that circle take up? And what area does that take up out of the hoop? If we thought of this as a two dimensional cross section, what's the ratio of the area of the cross section of the ball to the area of the cross section of the open net? And which ratio is bigger? I encourage you to put a math layer on something that you already love because math is there if you let it be there. If you can just start associating math to some things so that it enriches some of the activities you're already doing rather than you feeling like, oh, I have to practice math. Really, you can use math and harness it so that you can improve your life and improve your happiness, health, and wellness in a way that you enjoy and in a way that you want to come back to it day after day and make it a part of your routine. So see you next time. Stay tuned for more virtual field day math lessons and thanks for tuning in.